Welcome, I'm Lloyd, and this is The Dressing Gown Diary. I'm afraid this evening you can only put up with me. The boys are not with me, but they will be back on Friday for the semi-final preview. So what are we going to talk about in this episode of The Dressing Gown Diary? It's clearly the wrap-up and review of the quarterfinals, of which they were all epic for their own reasons. Let's move through the gears and let's start off by talking about England's demolition of Australia. Australia tactically naive, England kicking long, inviting the attack, England's defensive line speed was very, very good and they took opportunities when they were, when they found. Those of you that have heard uh, Michael Checker's half-time rant, it's pretty amusing, it's certainly X-rated, but it just shows he's an angry man. His post-match interview as well, when he talked about he was asked whether he uh, foresee a future within the job he didn't answer the question directly but 24 hours he was gone Eddie Jones will be very happy with the way England serenely moved through that game I was expecting Australia to put up much more of a fight but they looked a bit lost England power game certainly showed it was a very impressive performance from England next up Ireland searching for their first ever semi-final came up short again that's the seventh time they've lost at the quarterfinal stage. New Zealand absolutely pummeled them, though. This is one of the finest performances of any team in the last World Cup cycle four years, if not beyond. New Zealand took every single opportunity they had. Ireland had no answer, looked lost of ideas. And I think this is the sad demise of a team that peaked in autumn 2018. We saw in the Six Nations uh, a regression from Ireland and so it was shown these, this old tactics, this, this kind of blunting, looking to blunt the opposition was basically found out. New Zealand were way too explosive. 16 offloads to Ireland's two. They looked to get across the gain line. Boda Barrett scored a little nice little try himself but Ultimately, if a team scored seven tries, as New Zealand did, you're not going to lose the game. Ireland were nullified until the last few moments when they got their, uh, got their try. It was a... Uh, what can you say? Joe Smith has now finished. That is it. Roy Best gone. Great servant to Irish rugby. Both of them, actually, great servants. But ultimately, they came up short. The world number one ranked team going into the tournament couldn't get past the quarterfinal stage. Has us been their history. We move on to Sunday. Now, I have to say... I was feeling pretty confident that Wales would boot France. But 10 minutes in, that had completely changed. France really showed up at the races, playing electric rugby early doors, opening up the Welsh defence at every opportunity. Wales hanging in there somehow. A bit lucky to get back into the game as well. The Wainwright try was really opportunistic and not what you expect to see at this level. But then the, uh, the mistakes from France started creeping in. There were some poor kicks. They left five points on the field off the tee. There was also some average decision making where they had opportunities to kick for drop goals later on in the game that didn't take attempted one nowhere near hit an up and under that was easily dealt with and of course the red card Jacko Piper what were you doing having your photo taken with the Welsh fans clearly an error of judgment but there's no question it was a red card I can't believe that Piper actually didn't see Wainwright uh, earlier on because his neck was being pulled away and then he goes back in for some more there's no question it was a red card but geez, did Wales dodge a bullet or what? It was very, very lucky to get through that game. Even against 14, Wales couldn't structure an attack. That's as poor as Wales have played for a long time. But ultimately, it's not about how you play in knockout rugby, as Ireland know. It's about whether you get the win. The W is all that counts. And Wales somehow, against all the odds, against how crap they were playing managed to get up against a French side who self-imploded. It was very fortunate, but the Welsh camp will not worry about that now. They're through to the semi-final. However, they're playing against the South African team who did an absolute number on Japan. I'm wearing this little number as a little sayonara to Japan. You lit this tournament up with some epic rugby, but ultimately the quarterfinals reaching the semis was a step too far for you. You still showed some great rugby, 5-3 at half-time, in with a shout, but then South Africa power game, kick-chase game, 
just general dominance came to the fore and it just looked that Japan had lost their way a little bit when it really counted. Still, they're an absolute credit to the country. Everything that we're reading about the number of people that are watching these games, it's putting World Rugby under pressure about where Japan do step in. Losing to a South African side who have showed great power over the last six, nine months is no great embarrassment. So Japan, you've really done yourselves proud. How this sets up the semi-finals though. Boy, are there some epic semi-finals. But you know what? I'm not going to talk about those now because I think I need little monkeys getting overexcited about Wales to help me along that journey. But one thing I have got, boys and James, shout out to you. It's a pleasure and I'll catch you later. Cheers.